And I hope you've caught up and ready to go. I'm going to run a couple of palm trees in. Uh, these uh, palm trees give some people a wee bit of trouble. And this is a very rare occasion that I do this. I'm going to mix a bit of burnt umber with, with um, uh, a little white, burnt umber and white, something I normally don't do because white will really kill burnt umber. But anyway, we need a little bit for the um, trunk of the, the tree. And I'm going to run a uh, coconut palm type tree up here. And uh, we'll, we'll get another guy in here as well. And we need another one, at least another one coming up here. Now, these trees are very easy to do. If you remember that all of the frongs come from the top of the tree. The frongs don't grow down the trunk. They all come from the extreme top of the tree, like so. And I'm going to make the colour. Uh, with with uh, coconut palm type trees, you will find that if you err on the side of having it too dark, it's much more desirable than having it too light. You can always over highlight it if it's a bit dark, uh, but it's very hard to highlight it at all if you've got it too light. So have it nice and dark like that and you'll find that it'll go in without any trouble at all. This guy here, I get the corner of the brush right on the end of the trunk and flick that branch away, that frong away. And how, how easy is that? You can't get it much easier than that. This guy over here will rattle him in too. Now remember, if you put clouds in the sky, you should bear in mind uh, where to put them in relation to your trees because if you have trees behind, uh, I'm sorry, if you have clouds behind a tree like this, believe me, um, if they're not dry, you're going to wish you had never put them in because it will give you so much trouble. Um, but if you're careful in where you put them, then there's no hassle. I'm putting in a couple of dead frongs, uh, one hanging down here, and I'm going to go back and highlight it with a little bit of yellow-green. And we just want a little bit of yellow-green on the tops of the majority of them that are facing towards the sun. And they're a really easy little tree to do. This guy here, a little bit of practice and you'll have it. And you can put a couple of coconuts on it if you so desire. We could put a little bit of foliage on this tree here too while we're at it. And you don't always have to go back to yellow green of course. You can you can put some other colour. I'm using a little yellow ochre here to run over it. And on this side here we get a little yellow ochre into this guy too. But we don't want too much in the background because we have a house going in here and I'm going to put the house in um, that's going to run in about here, the sides are going to come down here. Uh, it'll return, well we could let it return yeah, about there. And I'm going to run this rather high roof on it. A lot of these Asian type places have rather high roofs to get very good ventilation underneath and, um, and, and it keeps it cool. Now, you may find it easier to actually paint this in. We want somewhat of a, a straw type finish to the thing. Incidentally, if you've got really wet paint underneath it, it sometimes pays you to just remove the worst of that. It'll make it easier for you to, to run the building in. I'm going to mix a little of that with some white 
and well <clears throat> if you mix it with white you'll find that it'll probably go on a lot easier for you and it does as you can see I'm using a knife there now but it really doesn't matter whether you use a knife or a brush you can finish it off with a brush if you want to we just run this guy over here a bit more we need a little shading regardless of what the material is that's used for construction you're still going to get this little bit of shading um, developing underneath the, the roof so we can run that tiny bit of shading in and the roof itself I'm going to add just a little bit of orange to that yellow ochre and white and run the roof away here the knife again is makes it nice and easy to bring it down to where I want it and we could just make it a tiny bit darker in this area here where it's in a little shade and finish it off where it starts to level out a bit with the orange and white so if you get that bit of shade in and then come down and blend it gently gently into the the lighter color at the bottom then you've got it made to some degree we need to we need to highlight the edge of that perhaps a little and by using a little bit of excess paint on the bottom we can really build that up a bit to emphasize it just mix up a tiny bit more pick it up on the edge of the knife and we'll let these little bits of rubbish hang down now you can come back with a with a suitable brush like a, a fan brush and drag that down on it in a series of little short strokes and it will immediately give the effect that it's a sort of a grass type roof that that is actually on it and the same with the side of the building you can do the same with the side of the building to get that grassy sort of look with the building and it, it is in most cases it, it, it probably would be constructed out of uh, palm fronds and that sort of thing which is a common building material there and I'm going to just put a window in here a bit of a window in the side here and a bit of a doorway in here now we need to come around the bottom of it and develop a bit of shade and make it look as if it's attached to the ground so we can creep along here get this shade in here and they have they have uh, we could just run a little bit of a track of course out here where the where the doorway is just run that back over towards this little road here and fuse it gently into the road now they, they do have um, some odd colors in their foliage over there I'm going to just emphasize this grass with a little bit of viridian type green however um, you can vary the tonal value of that of course but I'm just running it in there purely and simply to get shade more than anything and in this little um, in this little bit of water here we could introduce a little bit of viridian into that we'll run a little bit of viridian and white and just gently gently run it in here of course if you want to get in behind that tree then it's essential that you do it before you 
that you put green in like this before you do the tree, obviously. We need to pull away this little bit of reflection here and stroke that sideways. And a little bit of grass around here against that green. And a little reflection in this water up here. And it's all starting to take a little bit of shading out here into this little track. If you want to emphasize the track a little bit more, you can, uh, you can come back with something a little bit darker, something in the burnt sienna style of thing. Just roughen that little track up a bit, like so. Gently, gently work it back. We don't want dark colour in the background though, very important. You'll wreck your painting if you do. Now, we need something in the way of a sail or a boat or whatever. I'm going to just wet the bristles on this brush and pull them through the paint and line up the, the bristles. This may be fluid enough. Oh yes, it's going on all right. We'll just put a, a sail in in the distance here, but you will find that if you take a little white paint like this and a tiny bit of medium, mix them together and get it a little more fluid, you will find that you can get your boats and bits and pieces in a lot easier. Also, because this little brush is in very good condition, I'm going to use this little guy to run this in much better. And another one in here, another little one here. And you can clearly see that it's something in the way of a boat, but there's no detail. So we've got a a fleet of yachts there in just a few minutes and we need just something shaded underneath it here to indicate that there is the hull of a boat or whatever, you can't see it clearly, but there is the hull of a boat in the distance. These, um, this water here could have a little bit uh, in the way of a ripple here, so we'll just run a couple of little ripples in there. And I'm going to sign the painting. You can put the date on if you want to. It's amazing how time goes very quickly when you do put the date on it. And we'll run this frame around it and see how it looks. Well, what a great little painting for you to have a go at. Um, this window could be just straightened up a fraction more here, but only a minor thing. I suggest you get your brushes out and have a go at that. That's, that is a great exercise for you to do. Palm trees are a, a little bit different for you too. Remember the first brush strokes are hardest and the last one's the most satisfying. You enjoy your painting. Bye.